Hello, everybody. I'm sitting here with Isaac Krauss. You are the co-founder, the CEO, and the executive producer, one of the executive producers, on the upcoming Magic the Gathering, the animated series on Netflix. Yeah, that's right. That was a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a busy job. Awesome. Well, I have a, I have a bunch of questions here. I actually fielded out to, uh, to my audience as well to get a good taste of what they were interested in hearing about. But uh, I will admit that I used to be a big fan of Magic the Gathering in the past, but I've been out for a decent while. Sure. So this is definitely a bit of a, a leap in for myself uh, as well. So can you tell me a bit about Octopus? Pie as a company and what y'all do? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, we started out as a small animation studio. Mm -hmm. um, we did that as a way to kind of keep the lights on. Um, and we had some incredible opportunities to, to work on shows like Paranormal Action Squad, which was a YouTube Red uh, mm -hmm. original uh, animated series. It was actually the first animated series on YouTube Red. Um, and uh, we created a show with Robert Rodriguez uh, called Explosion Jones. Mm -hmm. And um, it was always around like um, this idea that we were um, in, uh, working with independent creators, helping them. Um, create stories that they wanted to tell uh, and um, uh, over um, the last year or so um, uh, we um, have launched um, our original network mm -hmm. on YouTube uh, which uh, is going to end up being um, a, a destination for um, you know independent creators independent animators to to um, try to get um, their stories told and um, to build an audience around that build fans around that mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, every Sunday we come out with new content there awesome um, ultimately um, the goal for octopi is to, uh, to to find fans you know to help creators find fans um, and to um, help um, you know continue to uh, develop uh, animation as an art form and as a, a storytelling medium um, that's one half of the company and the other half of the company is is um, uh, we're a high-end production house um, we are uh, working with um, you know uh, partners for um, commercial work uh, working with partners um, to create um, you know uh, really high-end animated series that's what we're doing with magic the gathering um, and in that case some um, people come to us saying you know uh, we need some experts um, to help us produce something uh, animated um, and um, uh, we build custom teams around that property um, in that project uh, in order to execute it at its highest level now do you feel like the series is going to appeal to viewers that are unfamiliar with magic the card game yeah you know that's a big challenge. Um, there is obviously so much lore and fandom around Magic the Gathering mm -hmm. uh, that we want to make sure that we um, uh, are doing justice to those those hardcore fans and the people that really enjoy the game and have been a part of the, the franchise um, as fans for the 30 years or so that, that it's been around. But um, we also know that we need to really um, leverage this opportunity to expand the fan base. You know, to uh, create um, a story that is universal, that people that aren't fans of Magic are still going to watch the show and say, wow, this is a really great story. And now I'm becoming a fan of Magic. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, so is this going to be an entirely original uh, adventure or is this going to be adapting any of the source material from uh, many of the storylines in the card games past? So uh, it's we just look at it all as lore. You know, okay. there's all these different stories that kind of exist from within the cards and uh, within uh, books and other things that have been created around magic. Um, and but we're telling a unique story through that lore. Um, so it's a real opportunity to develop the characters in a, a really concrete way, uh, more concrete than has existed in the cards. Um, and, you know, to tell um, an, an original story in animation. So it's entirely original. Does that mean that we're seeing any original characters or are we going to be focusing on any of the uh, established big characters? No, there's going to be... Uh, Characters, they'll be recognizable, um, but um, the stories behind these characters is what I'm describing as original. Oh, okay, so uh, would this kind of be separate from the continuity that's been there and you're using a bit of the the lore as more of set dressing and this is a, a separate universe to say? There's, you know, there's a lot of lore and there's a lot of potentially conflicting lore. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not trying to get too caught up in that. Um, you know, when there's a good opportunity to leverage uh, parts of the um, series or parts of the property that exists in lore, um, we use it. Um, but we don't, we're not um, confined by it. Sure, you're taking all the good aspects, not necessarily worrying about right. all the conflicting canon for 30 years. Exactly. You know, it's um, it's like similar, and the, one of the reasons why uh, Joe and Anthony were such perfect um, executive producers for this project is similar to Marvel, where you can have all these different stories being told with these characters, but to, you know, to tell the right story, you got to think about the medium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and ours is, of course, uh, animated series. So um, the stories that we're telling um, are going to be unique for that medium. And we just, uh, again, like leverage the best parts of the lore, things that I think are exciting and um, inspiring um, mm -hmm. for the series from things that we've like learned from um, what already exists in the lore. Well, you mentioned stories plural. So mm -hmm. are we going to be looking at uh, multiple stories interconnecting? Is this going to be kind of one overarching plot? Well, uh, it's there's... 
you know, I can only say so much. Sure, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, the goal here is um, to set the foundation for telling lots of stories in Magic the Gathering. Okay. Um, and for us to do that, we're um, telling a very small story. When I say small, I mean uh, character focused, character driven, something that allows us as an audience to really care about these characters and then go on this you know um, intense uh, journey with them while slowly expanding the, the universe of Magic that we hope to do many, many seasons of uh, of uh, uh, animated content in. Yeah, sure. Now, uh, I know you can't say a whole lot, but um, is there anything you can give us about the uh, about the plot, maybe like a big bat or anything? Oh, no way. Uh, to <laughs> totally understandable. All I can tell you is that, um, uh, you know, what um, I think has already been said, uh, but uh, uh, when it comes to the tone, you know, we're going for something really dark, very Ooh, dull. I actually wanted to talk more about that. Yeah. So uh, I noticed that the writers, you have um, Henry Gilroy, who wrote for Star Wars The Clone Wars. Totally. And also uh, Jose Molina, who mm -hmm. wrote for The Tick. Mm -hmm. So are we expecting a bit of a tone that's more in line with some of those properties where it's uh, approachable from... Um, you know, a bit more of a family perspective, but it gets uh, like darker overtones, something a bit more serious in the subtext, or are you wanting to go for something a bit more serious from the get-go? Well, these guys are uh, incredible writers and they are really incredible genre writers. Um, they uh, really absorb um, the the world, the universe uh, of magic and are able to um, take that in and then kind of output um, a character-based story. So uh, even though they've done um, things like those descriptions are, are things that would not really be the tone that we're looking mm -hmm. for in magic, um, but um, there is um, aspects of uh, both the Tick and um, Clone Wars that um, uh, really uh, provide a, a good foundation for um, character banter, for um, uh, action, for, for 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 plot setup and stuff like that. That we'll definitely be leveraging in Magic. Sure, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, one thing I did want to mention, uh, ask you about is. Um, so one thing I read in articles online is that this is definitely seems to be a series that's written by fans, uh, for fans and potentially new ones. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the writers are able to really absorb this entire big multiverse mm -hmm. that uh, that Magic is known for. So can we expect a lot of any or any kind of Easter eggs or deep cuts? Oh, for sure. We every opportunity we we have to um, give um, some. Um, uh, you know, nod to the fans uh, we take. Um, and it is this gonna not just be from the writing, it's gonna be from um, our character designs, it's gonna be from our environment designs. Uh, we're gonna be um, feeling the thing with everything we can find that would fit well inside our story that is magic related. Uh, it's it's interesting that you bring up like the character designs and mm -hmm. stuff like that, because uh, one thing is that for a lot of the creatures, there's some gnarly kind of uh, gross looking oh, creatures God, out yeah. there. And especially if you're looking for a more serious tone, can mm -hmm. we expect uh, some of that stuff to be adapted more faithfully? Are you going to be holding anything back for well, the animated media? <laughs> Man, it is. Uh, this is one of the things that's most difficult about this series. I mean, I shouldn't say difficult, but most challenging. Um, and we have a really incredible art director named Evan Vera. And his job is to look at all of that incredible existing art that exists on all the cards and in the art books and everything else mm -hmm. that's been created around the medium and to um, you know, absorb that and then uh, to create a, uh, an, a style that's producible in animation mm -hmm. um, and a style that's going to be really unique and cool. Uh, something that's going to give our series, um, uh, you know, a, a impact the moment you see it, you see something uh, original and unique. So do you think this is going to have uh, an aesthetic that's very much its own separate from a lot of the Magic Gathering stuff, but still very familiar to fans? Or, or are you trying to just kind of make it all congruent into one big feel? Well, you know, again, like if you look at the style, it's some of the um, uh, cards are like, just incredibly well-crafted oil paintings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and um, it, which is just really kind of impossible to produce in an animated series. Of course. So um, the adaptation um, of the characters um, of the world um, is going to be, uh, again, it's going to be unique. It's not going to look exactly like the cards or anything like that, but it's going to be recognizable that these are the characters from the cards. Sure. Uh, in terms of, of art and animation style, um, what kind of, uh, can we expect, 2D, 3D? Yeah, well, uh, the pipeline is um, a 3D. Okay. Uh, um, but um, we are um, leveraging 3D in a unique way. Um, it's not going to be uh, cell shaded. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, like a Pixar kind of uh, a plastic looking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be something, again, that we're really putting a lot of R&D into to develop a unique look. Um, and 
you know, there's some stuff out there that would be kind of comparable, but, um, you know, it's so early in the process. We're about 10 weeks in, um, into production. So we're not, uh, we haven't locked a style. Sure. Um, we're doing a lot of different tests and it's, it's, uh, it's still something that we're developing. So it's, it's okay. hard to really point at something and say, it's going to be like that. Could you imagine there being any of the artwork being used uh, from the show trans translating into cars? Oh yes, absolutely. I think, uh, that's one of the most exciting things of, of working with Wizards of the Coast is that, uh, you know, they t typically take them uh, about a year or so to be able to put um, uh, designs into cards. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we don't have a, anything official uh, worked out yet, but there was some conversations about potentially uh, having some of the stuff that we're creating in the show end, up, cool. end up in the game. And that's, to me, I think that's the ultimate, um, you know, a cycle um, to have, not uh, just have us um pulling stuff into our show that is coming from um, the card game, but to actually influence the, the game itself. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. So what's it been like working with Wizards of the Coast? Are they pretty hands-on, or do they let you guys do kind of your own thing? Um, they're trusting us to tell a good story. Okay. Um, and we trust them um, to uh, lead us that way with um, being true to the magic uh, property. Um, sure. And uh, they're incredible. Uh, uh, that team over there, um, they just... Uh, they're just such passionate experts of th of um, their property, uh, which is really uh, nice to see because that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. um, and they just they they're such experts at um, what they've built and what they've built really well. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, utilizing them in every possible way is, um, a, is is the strategy for this show. That's awesome. Well, similarly to working with Wizards of the Coast, um, obviously the Russo brothers are being big names that are tied to this, and this is probably one of the biggest projects they've been tied to post-Endgame. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it been like working with them? And out, I know you mentioned a little bit with how Magic being so dense with its uh, extensive lore, mm -hmm. uh, they've been able to kind of tie it in similar to Marvel. What mm -hmm. other kind of impact have they had on the design process thus far? Well, you know, we from story to um, the look and feel of our show, um, everything um, uh, is presented to Joe and Anthony, and um, they give uh, such incredibly mean meaningful and uh, focused um, notes on on how to make the show better. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are just experts of of creating genre, you mm -hmm. know, a uh, uh, medium. Um, so uh, being able to um, uh, explore and, and animation is kind of new to these guys. Yeah. Um, so it's something that they're really passionate about, and they've been always looking for an opportunity. And what better opportunity than Magic the Gathering? Oh, especially because they're on uh, the record as being huge fans. They are, uh, and um, and that's one thing that they're really good at is that they're they're really good at protecting that um, that fandom um, and making sure that it um, is um, presented uh, in the final content. Mm -hmm. um, but also when it comes to um, just their experience um, and being able to help lead us um, through. Um, figuring out, um, you know, answering the questions that we have to answer very early on about mm -hmm. like, what is the show going to be, um, that their direction um, has been um, incredibly valuable. And um, it's going to, I think, add up to being something that is going to be uh, uh, very successful and going to um, uh, really, um, you know, grow a huge fan base. Okay. Well, um, one thing that's that's fascinating to me, at least, with using Magic the Gathering as a property is that it mostly focuses around the Planeswalkers. The, they're mm -hmm. basically your superheroes of everything. Right. Uh, I, again, I know you're so you're so early into this, but do you have any idea of what combat would look like? Are we going to be focusing more on planeswalkers summoning creatures and mm -hmm. spells? Are we going to see some up close action scenes with you know characters that are skilled in their weaponry? A bit of both. Yeah, you know, um, we we want to make sure there's action payoff um, in our show, um, but you know, meaningful action payoff, um, something that is um, you know again really well developed characters and character story means that you care about what's happening with the characters, and then you'll care and, and enjoy even more when they're put into an intense situation like a, a fight. So um, uh, we are um, a big part of our R&D is developing how um, magic looks mm -hmm. um, uh, in our series and that it, uh, it has that awesome payoff, um, but also um, so that it doesn't feel cheesy and, um, you know, layered on top of, uh, of of our story, that it feels like it's really intrinsic into our style and, and mm -hmm. um, how our characters, um, you know, use their um, abilities. So uh, without getting too deep into, you know, who our characters are or, or um, that part of the story, all I can say is that, um, you know, we've put an extremely large amount of resources into making sure that the the, the magic of the show looks awesome. Well, from that, I kind of get hints that uh, the different uh, different types of mana are mm -hmm. going to kind of manifest a bit differently. Do they each have their own uh, aesthetic, kind of like how they do in the game? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a part of a character, ultimately, mm -hmm. um, what their magic abilities are. So um, we want to make sure that that personality exists inside of, um, of their power. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, you know, everybody 
all the that's one of the things that's so incredible about this um, this property is that there's so many different types and unique styles of magic, um, you know, that can exist inside the characters. We want to make sure that each character really owns that look and that feel, um, and that's a it's it's ultimately a part of the character design. Okay, uh, so Netflix as a distribution model, uh, how does that impact the storytelling? Uh, do you make everything with binging in mind, or mm -hmm. do you make each episode kind of feel like it's going to be an isolated uh, episode? Yeah, uh, it's um, Netflix is a really um, uh, incredible partner to be working with. Um, they're very supportive of doing something unique, which is allowing us to really kind of push uh, what people think of animation. Mm -hmm. um, the storytelling itself is something that um, uh, we are intending on people to watch through um, from episode to episode. You know, we, it's it's a complete story um, uh, across the the season, um, but um, uh, you know, which which is great because we're telling a big story, right? You know, um, it's this strange hybrid of um, television and and feature is what it kind of feels like um, being able to create a Netflix series, knowing that people aren't going to have to come back the next week that mm -hmm. they can literally watch all the way through. But um, some people only do watch an episode at a time because you know that's what they the time that they have set aside, and mm -hmm. we want it to work on both cases. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily you need to have all this information fresh to process the entire storyline. Yeah, you know, there's um, arcs within our episodes and arcs across our season. Okay. And um, we, we have to kind of create a hybrid there so that um, we can best utilize what Netflix is good good at. Sure. The world that you're building in this continuity, could mm -hmm. you see that expanding past uh, the show or are you really just focusing on the show and by itself? Well, w again, we're like, we're setting a foundation. Um, this is the first time that uh, Ma uh, Magic the Gathering has been in um, this type of medium. Mm -hmm. um, so basically video, you know, uh, right. the idea of, um, of a story with time. Um, so uh, we hope that this is um, the beginning of um, you know the entry point into a much bigger uh, universe um, of storytelling um, that could be beyond animation. It could go to live mm -hmm. action. It could do all these other things. We we want our efforts here to um, you know again lay the groundwork for something much bigger. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there was any kind of conflict uh, given 20th Century Fox? They were working on, on a Magic the Gathering movie to release, I want to say 2014, 2016. Uh, was there any hurdles acquiring the license whenever that was still up in the air? Um, I'm not sure what's what, what's going on in that in that case. Um, and you know just to be clear with us, you know um, we didn't license magic okay they, they, they approached um, you yeah it's uh we are um, producing it on behalf of of um, of um, wizards of the coast oh very cool so um they're um you know this is their property and um um so you know we're um and being entrusted with um, um uh you know providing our creative uh, direction and input um and and producing skills to to help them make an incredible series awesome yeah well i guess kind of the last question i really have uh, prepared would be um you know what is the the most special part about this project to you so far like what mm -hmm. do you think is uh the most unique thing from uh this series that you're approaching well uh again it's just it's like untouched snow mm -hmm. you know like our footsteps are going to be the first ones in there and we were just scary wanted, yeah it is it's intimidating but at the same time it's a what a credible opportunity mm -hmm. you know so um being able to um tell a really great um, story while setting up for lots of great stories is um, uh, one of the most exciting parts of mm -hmm. this. Um, I think um, working with such passionate uh, expert people, um, like from uh, the Wizards of the Coast team uh, and from um, you know the Octopi team that we've come together with, and um, you know um, the animation team at Bardell is just uh, really, really uh, competent and um, experts of 3D. Mm -hmm. So like all the um, uh, incredibly talented people that have come together to make this thing happen, um, including Joe and Anthony, which you know, this is our, our first big project working with these guys, mm -hmm. and um, they're uh, this on its own is just an incredible opportunity. Um, just having all these people come together, uh, it feels like like um, the perfect storm to be able to execute this in a way that I think is really going to pay off and, and really um, excite um, the the current fans and and, and maybe. Uh, create a whole new generation of, of fans for magic. Awesome. Do you have a, a rough timeline of when you think we can expect the, the first <laughs> season to drop or is it way too early to tell? Uh, I mean, we have a rough timeline, but uh, unfortunately I can't uh, give anything oh, away. Totally understandable. <laughs> uh, is there any way that fans could possibly uh, uh, 
keep in touch with seeing the progress behind things? Yeah, we're going to keep um, giving um, announcements as soon as we um, are, are getting to our next checkpoints. You know, I, I assume at some point you guys, everybody will be able to get a, a look mm-hmm. at what this is going to be and how, how it feels and understand um, um, what the animation will be like. Um, and, um, you know, I'm sure uh, as we get closer to the release date, there will be um, more and more uh, teasing mm-hmm. things coming out of um, um, the production uh, and out of uh, Wizards of the Coast. So just, uh, 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 you know, uh, keep your ear to the ground. Awesome. Well, are there yeah. any uh, social media pl- uh, areas you'd like to plug to see where people can follow you, keep in touch with things? Um, yeah, you know, uh, Octopi. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash Octopi, um, we put up uh, new original content. That's, okay. you know, half of our company is creating um, uh, completely original content and, and developing that around our passion for animation and, and fandom. Um, the other half of our company is uh, supporting that as a production mm-hmm. studio. So at, at octopi.com, um, um, you can you find our social media mm-hmm. um, channels, and um, uh, YouTube is the one that we're most active on. Um, but uh, Facebook and Instagram are there too. Um, and uh, anytime that there's any news around Magic, um, we post it immediately. And um, and sometimes uh, we'll even have some exclusive stuff to talk about. Well, awesome. I hope that's been uh, pretty pretty thorough. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate oh, it a lot. Thank you for having me. Um, have a- Yeah, have a good one. (laughs) Thanks, you too.